Okay, class. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to illustrate some things here with respect to demand and supply that we were talking about last week. You know, let me first of all draw an XY axis. Here's the Y axis and then here's the X axis that we have talked about. Now, um, I'm not sure you can see that. Uh, I'll have to check that later. And we talk about a relationship between the values of X and Y, and I drew a line like this, which was basically a straight line, downward sloping. And we said last time that what that did was to show you a, an inverse relationship between Y and X. In other words, if zero is down here, <clears throat> then as a high value of Y is associated with a low value of x, and a low value of y is associated with a high value. Actually, I'll draw that on here so you can see that. Now, if we change this and say y is equal to price, this is just a variable, and we say that x is equal to quantity, and I'll put q out here, then we can call this curve the demand curve. And that demand curve, as you know, all economics is about supply and demand. We all know that from the time we're five years old, just about. And so there we have drawn the first curve on a graph that represents an economic principle. And that economic principle is referred to as the law of demand. And what the law of demand says is that as the price of a product goes down, people will buy more of it. And you know that to be a fact. Uh, we call that in marketing parlance a sale. So when you see a sale sign, 40% off, and I was just with my wife in uh, Dillard's and Belk's the other day. She was looking for some clothing, didn't find anything. But all over the place, you see signs, sale, 40% off, 20% off. What are they trying to do, of course, is to entice you to buy something with the idea that you're buying it for less than you would otherwise have to pay. So the demand curve becomes a very important law of economics. And we're going to use that a lot in what we study in the semester. So this is why we put an emphasis on, right at the beginning really, that you need to understand how important a graph is and what we mean when we draw a line on a graph, what kind of relationship it is. Now let me, just to complete this, let me give you one other simple relationship. And I'll draw this, uh, let me get a black one over here. Hopefully this has some ink in it, but we'll soon find out. Oh, well it's brown. And I'm going to call this a supply curve. Now you see the supply curve is upward sloping. So it's showing a direct relationship between price and quantity. And I should say that when we talk about the demand curve, we were really talking about quantity demanded down here. And when we're talking about supply, we're talking about quantity supply. Now the supply curve represents the willingness of various companies, and the ability, I should say, willingness and ability, of various companies to supply output to the market. And you and I both know that companies are not going to do this if they're going to do it at a loss. Why should they? And the best example that I can think of in today's world is the output of oil. Now, you may think that all production of oil is at the same cost, but it is not. Various companies in various locations of oil wells have very different costs of production. So if you're producing in Saudi Arabia, where it's nothing but sand and the oil is only 
say 100 feet down, your cost of production is very low, say down here. If you're down in Texas, and as you know, about uh, 100 years ago, we discovered oil in Texas, the cost is about here. And if you want to put that in terms of the economic terms, this may be $10, this may be $20. And then you get to the North Slope, you know, up in Canada, right there on the uh, Arctic Sea. And their costs may be $40 a barrel. And then you go out into the Atlantic Ocean or to the Gulf of Mexico and you build these platforms and drill deep into the ocean floor. And their costs may be $60. The point that I'm trying to make here is that as the price goes higher, more and more companies can afford to supply the oil. So for instance, when the price of oil, and it was about five or six years ago, was down about $15 a barrel, Saudi Arabia could afford to produce it, but Texas could not. And in fact, many Texas oil wells at that point were capped no production, and neither could any of these others. But as the price of oil has risen, and now it's well over $70, which means that <laughs> I would have to draw a demand curve like this to represent $70 over here, and I'll comment on that in a moment, where demand and supply intersect, because that's what determines price, I might add. But at $70 a barrel, everybody can afford to produce, and we're even exploring more expensive ways of producing oil. So what we're illustrating here is that as the price goes up, more and more companies can make a profit producing higher and higher cost oil, and therefore that will help the supply. And I think if you think about that, that that makes a lot of sense. Now, I'll only conclude this very short comment on demand and supply. Um, I originally showed the demand curve down here at about $40 a barrel. What do you think would cause the demand curve to shift up? Well, I'll give you the example. The emergence of India and China as industrial and economically growing countries. So now their citizens want to drive cars as well, and their industry has many more machines that need oil and gas to run them. So that has resulted in what we call an upward shift in the demand curve. And so now, and just the other day, uh, actually the equilibrium price in the market was $72 per barrel. And just to conclude this, yes, that translates directly into the cost of gas. So therefore, the changes in the value and the price of oil determines what the supply is. The intersection of demand and supply determine the price. <clears throat> and in conclusion, I might add in later on, I'll show you a video that oil is traded in an international market, which happens to be located in New York City, and it's an auction market. It's just like eBay. So there are those who are selling oil, there are those who are buying oil, and they're constantly bidding against one another in order to get future oil contracts. And as a result of that bidding in the demand versus supply, the price can go up and the price can go down. Okay, well that concludes this very uh, brief explanation of demand and supply and why graphs are so important in economics. Thank you, and we'll be talking to you again.